my name is Mitch Tidwell with SBTC Collegiate, and today we are talking about developing vision and implementing strategy. Now that sounds like, oh, that's for big ministries, that's for big churches, things like that, but that's really not so. Even as a church that's just beginning, these are very important things as you think about building a college ministry. And so today I have with me Andy Abramson. Andy, how are you, brother? Good, how you doing? Yeah, good to see you. Andy uh, is the founder and director of uh, a ministry called Elementum. They help churches uh, uh, reach college students and, uh, and young adults. And so Andy, the reason why I asked Andy to, to, to jump on here and film this with us is because Andy has had a lot of reps at helping churches yeah. um, that really don't have little to no college uh, students or young adults even in their, uh, their church. And a lot of times you, you help churches that don't have any like college pastor, young adult pastor per se, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of contexts we, we work with. It's a church who has a volunteer right, yeah. who has a passion for college students or uh, young adults in their context, yeah. and they're just trying to figure out what to do. Mm. So there's no formal even college pastor. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. So I think this is this fits a lot of a lot of churches. Uh, that scenario fits uh, mm-hmm. a lot of our churches, even here in Texas. And so, so here's what I want to uh, here's how I want to frame this: is a lot of times we think about beginning or developing a ministry, we always think about what do we do. So. Um, yeah. What Bible study should we should we read or go through? What uh, what day of the week? Like we're always thinking, what events on the calendar? Are we thinking about that, but I think we need to pull back just a little bit and just really think of the why. Like why are we doing yeah. this? Yeah. Uh, what what's the vision that we're going towards? So let's just say you've got a church calls you up and says, "Hey, uh, we got a couple volunteers passionate about college students. Um, where do we start? Where, yeah. where, where would you even go there? Yeah, so really it's helping them understand um, the unique calling that God has put on mm. that church with uh, those specific leaders. And yeah. so we'll walk into that situation and we really want to help them understand three major components. One is what is the passion that God has put in their heart, mm. right? What is that vision? What is the thing that's burning inside of them as they look at a college campus or college students that are in their local church of saying, how do we engage with this age group? How do yeah. we reach this generation? And so you want to begin to really kind of uncover what that passion is mm-hmm. and help them mine out some of those key um motivators behind that. Then what we want to do is help them understand um, who is the unique uh, people that God has brought together. As they look at their church, the volunteers or the other college students in their church even, what is the unique gift mix and and the unique personalities that God has brought together uh, in in, in that scenario? And then the last thing is helping them understand their unique place. Um, you know, what is the unique context that, that God has them in that may be different from a different context that's down the road or several miles mm-hmm. in a different city? And so really it's helping them first, before we jump into program, before yeah. we jump into activities and doing things, mm-hmm. it's really helping them understand their unique passion, mm-hmm. their unique people, mm-hmm. and their unique place that God has put them in. So how would, to, to figure out, because I, I think what we see in churches is you'll see a couple or maybe someone says, man, I just have a burden for this. Yeah. How do they begin to flesh out like exactly what is our passion? How are we going to, what, what is this vision that we have? Like, yeah. How do we articulate that? And so in a lot of ways, you, you jump in with conversations to help them articulate yeah. that, right? And, and then as we begin to move into that conversation, there's, it's helping them understand um, the, the, what we call like the sequence of ministry. Because mm-hmm. um, I think some of the temptation is, is some of these even volunteers or people can, can jump and see another college ministry down the road and then try to like want to replicate that college mm-hmm. ministry. Oh, this is what this church is doing yeah. or this is maybe what we've experienced in the past. Mm-hmm. But it's helping them understand, okay, what is, what is the natural, some of the first steps that you guys need to take? Mm. And you talked about one of those, is understanding like the vision you yeah. know, and helping them articulate that vision. But then it's beginning to think about really disciple making. Yeah. Um, you know, what does it look like for, um, for them to engage in discipling college students within their context? And sometimes that will lead to a program mm-hmm. and it could lead to a study or something yeah. you know, in that nature. But it also could lead to, and I've had conversations with smaller churches who they may never have a formal program, 
but for them, it's it's a matter of how do they love every college student that comes into their church, mm -hmm. inviting them over for a meal, washing their laundry, watching mm -hmm. the Super Bowl together, mm -hmm. engaging in those relationships that ultimately, in a lot of ways, I, I think we need to reframe ministry, right? Because mm -hmm. ministry for us sometimes is about a program, it's about a, an activity, it's about a time, a, a night of the week, right? Mm -hmm. And that becomes ministry. But I think in a lot of these contexts, we need to reframe ministry of mm -hmm. saying, maybe it's not a program, but maybe it's just relationships with people yeah. and engaging with those uh, college students as they come mm -hmm. into your local church, or even being, and, and I love this conversation, I was, I remember I was uh, talking to a pastor in small Texas, mm -hmm. and um, he said, well, you know, like, what would it look like for us? And I said, what if there was a group of people in your church that did committed to do two things? One is they would love every college student that would come into their church, invite mm -hmm. him over for a meal, care for him. But then what if they began to strategically put themselves in places where college students are? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I don't think there's that many. And I said, well, the Starbucks I just went to had three college mm. students mm -hmm. and this waitress here yeah. is a college student. So yeah. what if we even began to think about strategically what were the places in which college students mm. were located in the city and then they begin to frequently engage with those areas, mm. um, jump into relationships and just said, oh God, would you open up a door for a conversation that we can begin to pour our life and build into this relationship with this college student? Man, that is so good. I, you, when you think about, like, you know, when we talk in these terms of vision, strategy, and stuff, that can seem so, like, like I, I don't know, doesn't ministry, that sounds like more like military sometimes, does, like does, business. Yeah. But, like, just going back, because here's what happens. If you don't do that, what you end up doing is you build your ministry around programs. Yes. You build it around events and what you're mm -hmm. saying is like we got to go back to the why like this is about people yeah. not programs and so we don't want to say hey here's a program now college students you just somehow fit your way into this what we're yeah. saying is we want to uniquely know who we are we want to uniquely know who the students we want to reach are yeah. and we're going to form ministry around that yeah and, and you know the, one of the things that we've experienced as we've worked with churches all over the country is that each context is so different. Yeah. Like churches in Texas are different than churches in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And Las Vegas is different than Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. which is different than the Midwest. You yeah. know, so you look at that and say, um, and, and I really believe that the that we as the church need to continue to wrestle with this of saying, um, yes, that we have this great commandment, great commission calling. Mm -hmm as a local church, as the people of God. But what does that look like as a subset of that for a unique people group, mm. right? For for a church in uh, Fort Worth or a church mm. in uh, Colleen, Texas, mm. or what does that look like as a subset of the Great Commandment, Great Commission? What does that look like for a unique people of God mm. to live out the Great Commandment, yeah. Great Commission in the context that God has placed mm. them in? One of my favorite passages that we talk about is Acts chapter 17, right? That God has uniquely put you in the time and the season so that some may come to find Him and know mm. Him. And understanding that those places our mission fields that God has put us in, mm -hmm. but we need to understand the context, the, mm -hmm. the, the place in which God has placed all of us in to then help shape and form the ministry that we're a part of. Man, that's so good. So let's uh, just recap here. So we're talking, in order to understand that context, to uniquely do ministry where you're at, it's, uh, it's is it passion? Yeah, it's passion. You know, what is the unique passion? Mm -hmm. Then we're talking about the people. Who is the people that God has brought together? Mm -hmm. And then the place. What is the unique place, the context in which God has brought uh, you in, in the ministry? That's one. Well, let's, let's just take just a, a brief second again. I know that you, you've shared this a little bit, but let's kind of, if you could boil all that down to a couple of things that people, as they think about, okay, what is my passion, people, place? Yeah. What are some, maybe some diagnostic questions that you could that you could give uh, our watchers just to help them figure yeah, that out. Yeah, so when we think about passion, you know, what is what is the, the burning in your heart? Yep. You know, that's the big question when we talk about passion. And mm -hmm. ultimately, passion will help form vision, yep. right? It, it's the thing that is the, the catalyst to vision. Yep. And so what you're beginning to uncover is what is that passion inside of you mm -hmm. that is that is burning that that kind of spills out from you and begins and so you begin to ask question what is the what why is the passion and for a lot of people i i love asking the questions of why is because in in a lot of ways they understand the critical time 
in which a college student is is operating, mm-hmm. right? You think about like at no other point in any gener- any decade in our life are we making the most critical life changing trajectory setting decisions, mm-hmm. right? For a lot of people, that's the reason for passion. They yeah. understand the good decisions they made as a 21, 22, 23 year old, they understand some of the poor decisions they made in mm-hmm. that age as well. And so in a lot of ways, it's helping undercover the why of that in that, in mm-hmm. that passion. Mm-hmm. And then you think about the, the, the people, it's asking the question, what is the unique gifting of the people mm-hmm. here, right? Are they, are they administrative? Is, is there communicators? And being able, even, uh, there's some great tools, gift assessments, different personality profiles, DISC, Myers-Briggs, whatever, we use a lot of those just to help people understand the way that they're wired, what they, how they see the world, the way that they think, so what some of their giftings are, mm-hmm. and, and helping the, the group, ultimately the two, three, four people understand the unique people that God has brought together. Right? Mm-hmm. And then the place is, is asking, what is the, the context, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have a university? Do you have mm-hmm. multiple universities? Do you only have a junior college? Do you have no colleges? Those are important questions mm-hmm. to ask. You think about some of the cultural hurdles that mm-hmm. uh, you experience being in a city or or rural, you know, you begin to look at some of those questions of, okay, what is, what helps shape our our place? Mm-hmm. You know, what are some of those things in, in being in a city with multiple mm-hmm. universities or being in a small rural community with a community college? Mm-hmm. Like all of those help shape the unique place in which God has called mm-hmm. you to be a part of. And then you think about even where you're located in the state or in the country, there's, uh, you know, unique even mindset hurdles mm-hmm. of that place oh, yeah. that you have to wrestle with mm-hmm. uh, that, that help shape the ministry that you're trying to, to form. Okay, so when so passion is what drives you, the people. So when you say people, you're talking about internally, like yeah. ministry team, yeah. and then place is the context of yeah. the people you're trying to reach, that kind of thing. All right, so we'll say we, we kind of we answer those questions, and we feel like, okay, we got a, a good idea of, of our passion, of the people here, of the people we want to reach. Now when we get to that implementing strategy. It's like, I, okay, I got this information. Yeah. Now how do I put feet on this thing? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that, that we'll do with, with a church is, is, is do a, a couple things. Is one is that we want to begin um, to group together a, a team of people. Mm-hmm. That's huge. And, and we talked about that with the people, yeah. right? But then from there, you begin to help them understand how do you start something simple for college students? Mm-hmm. And that could be, we're not, and I don't want to bash programs, right? Yeah. Sometimes those are good things. Yeah. A Bible study, a Sunday school class, a, a missional community, something like that is a good thing. And so that may be what it leads to. But part of it is, is then helping them understand the, the broad array of options of what ministry could look like for yeah. them. And so then we begin to help them start something simple discipling college students, mm-hmm. having um, meals over on Sunday afternoon. And mm-hmm. so giving them just, we always talk about that it's easier to steer a moving car than a parked car. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah it's it just, when, you ha- when you're beginning to go, then you can kind of help yeah. shape and kind of move things a little bit. Yeah. But when the car is standing still, yeah. it's really hard to move. And yeah. so we just want to get them going a little bit, get them moving, interacting with college students. Then as well, even our ministries, we begin to walk alongside of them to help implement some of those basic strategy, yep. some of the basic um, uh, components of values to help them understand, okay, yeah, we need to move a little bit this way or a little bit that way, or this is what disciple making looks like in our context and beginning to, to help them put some simple things in, in place. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, th- I think what I love about this, and this is what I think is encouraging to leaders, is you may see a ministry and you think, we have to do that. And the truth is, you don't. Yeah. Uh, you need to find out what God is uniquely placed yes. in you, what He's uniquely placed around you, and then just begin to implement ministry after that. And it's really like, it, it don't build, and I think this too, don't be afraid of failure. Like, yes. failure is a good thing. I mean, if you fail, you learn, hey, that didn't work, so mm-hmm. we need to tweak it. And, you know, don't, don't be depressed about that, because I think all great things do fail at some points. And yeah. so, uh, man, this was really good, Andy. I um, appreciate your time, yeah. and thanks for being here. I think this is some super helpful stuff for churches, so thanks. Thank you.